Hello, this is Joshua for Frost Dragon Designs, and today I'd like to talk to you about my lawful neutral axolotl hard enamel pin. This pin is part of a 9-pin collection of alignment axolotls. Good to evil, lawful to chaotic, there are 9 possible combinations. Now let's get into the design. Ah, where to begin? Um, so with this one, there's going to be two big things in the beginning that are very different than probably what you're expecting. One, this design, most of this video you will see I am designing this as a dragon. Uh, go back and watch my earlier axolotl video and you'll understand why um, a number of these start off as dragons and then I change them into axolotls. Uh, there's a whole little backstory involved in that there. But just know that at one point, many of them were dragons, and now they're axolotls. The other thing that you'll notice is that originally I had this as my lawful good design, and I kind of thought of it as more like a paladin. But the more I looked at it, the more it started looking like kind of like a fighter, and that's when I transitioned the alignment away from lawful good to lawful neutral. And I've said it in the other video, and I'll say it in this one, and I'll probably say it in future alignment axolotl videos. The alignment piece actually complicated these designs so much, and I really think limited their appeal to people. Um, so that that's kind of an just an interesting side note. I I kind of wish none of these had text on them, but they all have text on them because that was that was the experiment. That's what I was trying out at the time. Um, and sometimes you design things and you're like, yes, uh, why didn't I think of this before? And other times you design things and later you come back to it and you go, man, I wish I had done something different with that. And this is just kind of one of those situations and that happens. It's okay. It's actually better than okay if you think about it because I've been afforded the latitude by my success of being able to, to take chances, to do experiments, to try new things and see, one, how I like it, see how my audience likes it, and still have them produced as pins. So, I mean, if you think about it, this is really an awesome thing that I was able to not only design something that in the end I'm, I'm not so sure that I like, um, but I was able to have it produced some people do like it and enjoy it a lot, and I am sure that it will find its audience. Um, but it's amazing that I was afforded that opportunity. I mean, this is actually kind of an interesting situation if you think about it. It's kind of like the Hollywood problem, but on a much, much, much smaller scale, right? I mean, people complain that, you know, there's a lot of the same type of movie coming out of Hollywood. Um and, you know, it was that's kind of why I think uh, when Marvel started coming out with the Marvel movies back when the, the MCU started being a big thing, why that was so appealing, because it was it was different. It was very different than what Hollywood had done before. And so that was exciting for people. But now it, there's a bunch of those and everything feels very samey with that again. And the reason for that is because, you know, the studios don't want to take the risk, right? Because making a movie takes a significant amount of time um, and you don't want to, and money too, obviously, and you don't want to invest the time and money in something if you're not going to see a return as a business. That's just not um, what happens. I mean, we'd like to think of movies as art. Pins for me are kind of in that uh, weird in-between space. I mean, yes, it's my business. I run it as a business. But I also afford myself uh, a certain amount of latitude each year. I, I give myself a certain number of pins that I am doing just for either art's sake, for beauty's sake, or for experiment's sake. Um, and I think this really fell into the experiment's sake category. Um, when I do that, I'm not necessarily thinking about you know who the audience is that these are for, or anything of that nature. It's really just a, I have an idea and I want to see how it plays out. And for that, these were extremely successful. I had the idea, I got to see how it played out and that that's awesome. And I hope that I don't ever grow to a point as a business where I'm unwilling to take those risks, those exploratory risks, the artistic risks. Um, I mean, that's how we get awesome new stuff, right? Is, is somebody was like, Here's an idea that I don't see, and they try it. And so I think there's an incredible amount of value in that. And I would encourage any new pin designers out there, take some risks. I understand that like, if you're very new, you haven't built an audience, you're largely focused on you know what's going to sell. I get it. I understand that. I've definitely been there. Um, 
But if you're just going to be selling more of what's already out there and popular, I don't really know how much you can build on that. You know, I mean, I think that when something new catches people's attention, that is just so awesome and uh, more powerful. Anyway, I'm, I think I'm probably done rambling with this one. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching me design this pin. I hope you've enjoyed hearing me just kind of ramble on about some thoughts about creativity and that sort of thing. Uh, if so, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. I try to release one to two new videos a week, and I would love to have you along for the next one. So thank you again so much for your time, and have a great rest of your day.